The rhetoric of the red pill in Mingtao spaces often emphasize the risks of modern dating. They talk about divorce, financial loss, and the emotional pain. Again, all of which are valid. But this leads men to develop toxic and avoidant attitudes. Now, according to the stats, 63% of our young men are single. And in this young lady's video I'm going to show, she is going to explain why. Now, I'm going to beam in on two points that stuck out to me in her spill. And as usual, I am going to leave a link to the full video in the description below. So without further ado, let's roll them. The rhetoric of the red pill in Mingtao spaces often emphasize the risks of modern dating. They talk about divorce, financial loss, and the emotional pain. Again, all of which are valid. But this leads men to develop toxic and avoidant attitudes towards relationships, which I have to guess the majority of men actually want, as they become more and more focused on self-preservation and resentment towards women than they do on building genuine connections and cultivating some semblance of intimacy. With the narratives and communication that go on with in these communities. There's lack of trust, there's lack of desire, and you paint women as the evil demon that you must avoid and is who is responsible for all of your problems. Now this is where it gets really important that I don't paint a picture with a broad brush. There are incredibly toxic women, just as there are incredibly toxic men. But if we try to put everybody under one umbrella, everybody's gonna end up alone, depressed, and probably unhealthy. And men in particular, because they are the ones in these communities who tend to internalize these messages and narratives and take them on as complete truth for every woman they ever meet in their entire f lives, will struggle to open up to any potential partner because they fear betrayal or manipulation. And inevitably, this will create a self-fulfilling prophecy where men expect negative outcomes in relationships, leading to behaviors that undermine the relationship itself. And this will inevitably reinforce that there's something wrong with women when really it's the subconscious triggers that manifest behaviors of mistrust, betrayal, insecurity, abandonment that lead men to avoid any type of depth, which will inevitably ruin a relationship. Okay, so you heard that, you saw that. Now, she mentioned six things in her video that attributes to the reason why 63% of these young men are single. Now she says it's low testosterone, fatherless homes, feminism, the red pill philosophy, as you just heard with the MGTOW spill on it, social media and pornography. I can't say the word because you know how YouTube is. But anyhow, I'm beaming in on two and the first being this red pill MGTOW thing. Now in these spaces, there could be some positive things like a lot of these guys talk about becoming a self-made man, building yourself up, working on yourself, building your self-image, building your health, your wealth, and your education, and those things are good, okay? But there is a dark side, as you just heard in her spill, that a lot of these guys internalize this hatred towards women. That's what I'm going to call it. They develop this bitterness, right? So that they're always walking with this conspiracy theory that women are out to get them. Like they're these evil women that are waiting and lurking to just suck them dry of resources if they get into a relationship. Now, these guys <laughs> develop for themselves the self-fulfilled prophecy, right? They sabotage potential relationships, okay? And as they do that, it proves to them that these women are evil, like she said. Now, they build this mistrust and they develop a sense of betrayal, insecurity, and abandonment complexes, right? And all of this can be solved by just getting out and meeting people in real time. A lot of these guys, they don't have the skill of getting out there and socializing, right? They have this preconceived idea that Women want this certain type of man. And there are some women that want this fictitious, unrealistic guy. But when we get to the next point, you're going to see most women, most average women, most everyday women that wants a good, wholesome relationship, potentially a man that they could settle down with, marry and have children with, they're not like that at all. And until they get out there and they cleanse their mind of all that toxic stuff that comes from those spaces and keep all the good things that come from those spaces. Because like she said, if when you watch your full video, 
there are some good things. Building yourself up, working on your health, those are great things, but they are overshadowed by these dark things and these conspiracy theories that make women out to be nothing more than blood-sucking, money-hungry leeches. So let's get on to the next video. If you've spent more than five minutes on social media, you'll see highlight reels of girls on yachts and men who are wealthy, and everybody has this idea that, well, all of these women only want men who have all these fun toys. When in reality, if you go out and actually talk to a woman, most of us don't really give a about that. Regardless, the pressure to maintain a certain level of image on social media can lead to increased levels of anxiety and the ultimate fear of rejection, particularly when it comes to shooting your shot with a woman or dating anybody. And this will ultimately continue to put pressure on men to present themselves in a certain light, in a way that they believe will be attractive to other people or women. The problem with that though is that it forces men to put on a mask. If that's not who they really are or the lifestyle that they actually live, well it's easier to create a distance and play the long distance game until you can get somebody to fall in love with you so that maybe that's enough. And this ultimately driving up the anxiety, making it significantly harder for them to actually cultivate something real in reality. And it'll start to drive this perception of who they need to be while preventing them from actually taking the step and being vulnerable, owning who they are. Because at the end of the day, just as a personal side note, women care a lot more about your kindness than they do about your success. And no, this doesn't mean that women don't care about you having ambition or being driven or being successful in some light. But if you are successful, I'll choose a kind man who's middle class all day. Woo, man, that social media can be a booger. It can be a booger. Look, I've been shouting those points from the rooftop for a long time, but a lot of these young cats look at me and say, old oh, man, you are out of touch. You don't know what's going on today. And my message falls upon deaf ears and that toxic rhetoric and self-fulfilled prophecies reinforce the reason why they should leave women along. And it's crazy because these guys, all of those guys do desire a meaningful, loving relationship with one woman. Most dudes that I know, when, when they talk and they get vulnerable with me, right? They don't want to be players. They want one woman that they could be faithful with and should be faithful to them. But they don't listen to all this crazy talk. And along with a whole host of other issues, that they build up this wall and this crazy mindset and philosophy, again, like women are these blood-sucking leeches waiting to suck them dry, get married to them, and then divorce them and take everything that they've worked for. I went on the internet and I use AI. Yes, I am using it. And I asked the question, what do women really look for in men? Protectiveness, all right? women still find protectiveness attractive in men. They want a guy that they know that will protect them, right? That won't harm them. That will keep them clear of danger, all right? They want someone who's emotionally available, all right? Now, you got to be careful with this one, all right? Some people mistake being emotionally available with being leechy and needy, right? Now, when a woman says emotionally available, she doesn't want someone ignoring her and she doesn't want someone stuck so far up her crack that she can't breathe when she turns around, all right? She means she wants someone there that's available, who's not trying to shun them when they want to talk about some important things and when they just, you know, they need you to be there, right? Uh, trust me, I'm a married man. And these are things that I have to learn and still learning today being married for 28 years, okay? A sense of humor. Look, I am so dry. I'm like old, dry, crusty bread. And I'm still learning this with sense of humor now because I'm a nerd, all right? And a lot of guys that I perceive are having this trouble are socially awkward people like myself. I had to learn how to have a sense of humor, but I had to learn how to have a sense of humor as it appealed to who I am, you know? Try not to be like someone else, because when you try to act like someone else, right, then you're going to come across as fake. But you're only going to learn how to have a good sense of humor is by being around and interacting with people, particularly the opposite sex. OK, now this 
may mean being funny, but it just also mean that you don't take everything so serious and you're not so uptight that you're able to take a good joke and you're able to give some good jokes and you're able to just be an all around fun person to be around with, right? Uh, relaxing. Faithfulness. This is very important to women, okay? Women want a man that's faithful. She don't want no player. She don't want no gigolo. So all these rumors where you hear, well, women want these guys that, that really have the gift of gab. And that may be true to some extent, right? That goes back to having a sense of humor and being emotionally available. But she wants a faithful man, right? She wants to be assured that you're going to stick around, that you're not going to be filling her head with a bunch of lies to get what you want. Confidence, man. I could tell you a lot about not being a confident man, and my wife can too. And when she does finally get on here with me, she's going to tell you guys all about it. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be this over-the-top action hero guy. It means that you have to be assured in who you are. So if a woman don't dig who you are, just mm, let her slide. And you walk with your head up and with confidence because you're going to attract the type of women that dig who you are, but you got to have the confidence. You cannot be a needy person. You cannot be always putting yourself down. You can't always be asking for validation for a woman because women can pick that up. And that's could be dangerous, especially if you meet a savage woman, because there are some savage women out there. All right. Intelligence. Look, guys, it doesn't mean that you have to be a PhD level thinker, but you have to have a level of intelligence, right? You have to show that you are a person that is aware of what's going on in his, your society, your community. And that means that you may have to read a little bit more. Now, you just have to be well-read, well-rounded. And that's easy and that's free to do. And that doesn't take a whole lot, just a little bit each day to work on that. Modesty. Women don't like flashy guys. I know social media will have you thinking otherwise, like the lady said, you know, you get on social media, see these people in the perfect picture and the perfect lighting with the perfect bod on the yacht eating shrimp and steak and stuff. And the women are, <laughs> you're like, oh, I want to be that guy. No, women don't really like that guy. They like a guy that's disciplined, that's modest. They know that he's self-controlled in certain areas, that he's not overly flamboyant and that he has some reserve about himself. That's some mystery about himself. So they know that, okay, if he walks in class, so you don't have to always be blinging out. I know that was old school term. I'm an old guy. Okay. Forgive me for that. But anyhow, they want a guy that's modest, outspokenness, charity, and honesty. Okay. Let's sum that all together. You speak up for what is right. You speak your mind, right? You're not overly obnoxious, but you're able to articulate your points and how you see and view things around you in the world, right? And charity, right? You have a sense of giving, like generous. You have a sense of generosity, right? And honesty. They want a guy that, you know what? You may not have a lot, but they say, but you know what? This dude, he's honest. He's not going to lie to us. He ain't going to fill us with a bunch of bull crap. And humility. So that could kind of roll into all of that. I just described a humble person, someone that's not always trying to put himself up front not always trying to prove that he's the man. He walks in a way that people know he is the man, irregardless of where he's from or his background. And gents, <laughs> I got to touch on this one. And you may not dig this. Now, a lot of guys get on women about this, but I'm going to get on some of the guys about this. Your physical appearance, man. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I'm 55 years old. I'm still trying to keep my shape up. And there's a lot of challenges I've had being older, you no know, slower metabolism. I really got to watch what I eat so I won't get jiggly turkey neck that I'm fighting right now and that I don't get fat and lethargic and all that. So I have to exercise to some degree regularly to keep myself in a level of fitness so that I won't be a burden on my wife or a burden to my children. So I won't suffer sicknesses that I have control over. Look, you are going to have to keep yourself in good shape. I have never, ever in my whole life seen as many young people today, many young men that are so out of shape, can't even do one pull up, one pull up. And I don't want to be that dude to say, well, you know, back in my day, we used to 
you know, break logs with our hands and climb up trees naked and get splinters and laugh about it. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, look, you got to be a man to keep yourself well-groomed as best as you can, make sure you keep yourself in shape. Women, you know, hey, just like we want to look at a woman that's fine, women want to be able to look at you with your clothes off too, right? <laughs> and she don't want to look at stuff that's all jiggly and your walking bowl of jello gelatin pudding and stuff, right? They want someone that's in reasonable shape. Now, of course, you're not, they, they don't really care about if you have a Baywatch body or anything like that. Some do. But all I'm saying is, <laughs> you're going to have to keep yourself in good physical conditioning. You're going to have to dress as well as you can. Some women like certain styles. Some women don't. But you always have to be yourself. You don't want to put on a mask like that lady says. Some guys take this red pill advice saying that you have to be Superman dingo and have this absolute vibrato about yourself. And that's not who you are. You have to maximize who you are as a person, as a man, okay? And some women will dig you and some women won't. So I'm going to sum it up like this. Look, you got to really watch what you listen to from the Red Pill community and you cannot take everything that you see on social media for face value because if you do, it's going to give you an unrealistic view of what life is about and it's going to give you a misrepresentation of what young women really want. Now, I know you got that sprinkle, sprinkle lady who says this, that, and the other. And there's a lot of stuff floating around on social media. There is. But when you get out there and divorce yourself from the matrix and engage back into the analog world, okay, you'll find that most women are down to earth. They are down to earth. and. They're nothing like Sprinkle Sprinkle or these crazy expectations that these red pill men describe that women want. Now, you're not going to find these women in a club. I'm just saying that you'll find these women in everyday walks of life, whether you're going to the store, going to the park. You got to start reengaging out there. You have to learn that you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. But you learn from your mistakes, you learn from those experiences, you pick yourself back up and you get back out there and you don't develop this wall and say that, oh, women are like this. This can go for women too as well, but I'm speaking to the men because I had my spill with the young ladies last week. So anyhow, I'm going to wrap this up and I really want to hear what you have to say about this. But all I ask is that you keep the comments clean because if you come on here saying something nasty and mean, I'm going to delete your comment. All right. I just want some pure, honest dialogue from you. And if you really dig what I'm saying, please give me a thumbs up so that it can help me out across this YouTube space. And if you really like what I'm doing, you can watch any one of those videos that's up in the corner over there. And if you want to take it a step further, you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. So until the next time, I will see you on the next one. Peace.